So the most stable and the least expensive medium that I think one could use is LTO data tape. You know, and so even though that will change generations over time. So you have to migrate it. There's going to be a wide span of years longer than if you had those files on a hard drive. Mm -hmm. It lasts longer on that data tape than it will on the hard drive. Is there a, I, I understand there, there are going to be generations and, uh, you know, there, and, and things, mm -hmm. but is there a, is there an, an, an amount of time that those things will, that, that I can expect the LTO to be good for? I mean, you know, mm -hmm. Sure. Is it is it two years, five years, ten years? Well, it isn't the data tape itself. You know, it's more like, do you have the drives that can read that generation? Got it. Right. You know, and so that's the main thing because if you make that LTO tape and you store it on a shelf in a good environment, you know, oh. and it can just be an office environment as long as it's not too hot and humid, as long as it's not too cold and dry. You mm -hmm. know, just like a regular environment and nobody touches it and it's just left alone. And, but right. you know, the critical thing is to verify that you wrote the file to the tape and then you verify the checksums to make sure that nothing got corrupted along the way. And if you verify that checksum on the tape, sure. So a checksum is basically, it's a unique fingerprint. So just as we all, every human on the planet, we have our own unique fingerprints. Every single file that is created has its own unique fingerprint that cannot be replicated with any other file unless something's been hacked into it. And so, and so the checksum is basically, it's an algo, it's, it's, a, it's a hash. So it's going to be like an alphanumeric string, just letters and numbers together, mm -hmm. which if any bit changes, and that bit can change because that file has been touched or modified in some way, even if a little slight change happened mm -hmm. to it, that alphanumeric sequence is going to be modified and won't match. Okay. The original fingerprint. Or if you deliver that file to somebody else, the rule of thumb would be like, well, now you're going to verify that checksum when somebody receives it to make sure that no bits were lost during transfer. Okay. So, so basically you create that from the point of creation, just as when we're born, we are born with our fingerprints. Mm -hmm. You create that fingerprint for your files when you feel like they are finished and you make more than one copy, of course, mm -hmm. you want to have geographic dispersal for disaster recovery. Right. right. So the rule of thumb with archivists is you have three copies, at least three copies, you know, so that means if an independent producer or filmmaker is doing this themselves, you know, they could make two, they could make three copies and then store those copies somewhere else, you know, keep right. one themselves and store the other somewhere else. So right. anyway, but as long as you verify that those copies were written correctly right. and they're just sitting there, they'll be good until you need them. There okay. should be nothing wrong with a tape. I mean, the manufacturers say that um, it will last 30 years, mm. which you're going to migrate it before 30 years come to pass. You know, you're going to migrate it to a new generation. Right. Or hopefully, we'll, we'll get into that in a minute, but it's hopefully someone will if I'm yes. not around. The issue of whether or not LTO works, it just does full stop, you know, just does mm -hmm. yeah um it, that's not the issue it's not the they they, they the, the tapes you know the an lto 8 tape does mm -hmm. not have a restore by date on it right it just doesn't right um i mean i'm i'm the first movie i did uh that i archived the mix as i did it well i don't know if you can see this uh, i can't uh, really read that title what is uh, I, it's, yeah sorry it's it's out of sight it's steven oh, okay out of okay and Got here's it. the effects down and this tape restores to this day right it literally in july is going to be 25 years old mm -hmm. and i periodically restored it as like a party trick and uh, -huh. uh 25th anniversary i'm going to restore it again now i'm a little bit crazy and i have two Mac 9600s and two DLT 3XT machines with the software. Mm. So I'm a little crazy. But right. the bottom line is, is that this thing is nowhere near, this DLT 3XT is nowhere near as reliable as this. Right. And current tape, for example, this is uses an LTO 8 deck. Look, nothing right. really special. Put right, this right, into right. A mini and you're golden. It doesn't require any special software. 
It doesn't require any special operating system. And mm. so those need to be made clear because the, 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 again, the boogeyman is stated as, you know, computers changing. Well, I, I'm not going to get into technical weeds, but if you write to tape using what's called LTFS linear tape file system, I believe, mm -hmm. um, you, you, as long as you have the driver that allows the deck to talk to your computer, it doesn't care whether this thing is connected to a Linux machine, Windows, or Mac. Doesn't doesn't know or doesn't care. Right. And so right. this is archivally toxic. This has to have a Mac, a Mac Pro. Um, excuse me. Um, um, a Power PC Mac. Okay. It has to have an extinct piece of software. It has to have decks that are were no longer made in in the year two thousand. Right. So. You know, but so that's what I'm saying is this is a worst case situation and it works. This here, there are hundreds and hundreds of thousands of these LTO8 decks sold every year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They're not, it's not going to disappear. And the, the media itself has improved incrementally over the years. And right. so, anyway. Now, now that, let, first, let, that first LTO that you, you uh, from out of sight, that's an, uh, what is that? That's LTO. <laughs> Oh. You know, this is not LTO. This is called DLT three XT. Oh, DL oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. This is before. Th th this was something from the '90s. Okay. Um, and um, LTO format began uh, in the year 2000. It's it's actually okay. a, a consortium of companies. Gotcha. And the uh, it's you know people should look it up and it's right. a, it's a great thing. I mean, it 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 leads the world of data archiving. It's just a big dog and it's not going away.